Hello, this is Little Daddy, and today I will be teaching you how to say the most important thing when traveling in 15 different languages. Have you ever wanted to travel but didn't speak the local language? Well, that can be very daunting and may even throw a wrench into your vacation plans. But after I teach you today's shortcut, you will be able to speak to anyone, anywhere, and create the most pleasurable experience when traveling. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So the first language is Japanese. Japan is one of those countries that are very isolated in terms of language, meaning that if you don't understand or speak Japanese, you will really struggle in that country. So it's very important that you get this correct. The proper way to say it is Watashi wa manko ga itsuyo. Again, Watashi wa manko ga itsuyo. And it's very important that you do the finger thing. One of the cool things about my videos is that in other people's videos, they don't really explain to you the why. So back to the finger thing. In the Japanese culture, doing the finger thing is a sign of respect. So why are you doing this? As a tourist, you want to show that, you know, you respect the culture and that you, you want to be as polite as possible. When speaking in the Japanese culture, you, you want to do the finger thing. Also, uh, it's very important that when you do the finger thing, you don't maintain eye contact because maintaining eye contact is a sign of aggression in the Japanese culture. So when you're speaking and doing the finger thing, you want to look down and avoid eye contact. So to tie it all in together, when you get off the plane in Tokyo, you would go, Orra, watashi wa manko ga ichiyo. Arigato gozaimasu. And there you go. You already made a new friend. Next up, we have Korean. Korea, much like Japan, is also a very isolated country in terms of language. So it's very important that you get this right. So the way to say it in Korean is nan puji pidio heo. Again, nan puji pidio heo. Now you'll notice that I end my sentences with the yo. In Korean, that is the polite way of ending your sentences, which is typically followed by bowing and giving gifts. So as an example of a conversation that you'll be having, you would say, <laughs> Next up, we have Filipino. Although commonly confused with Tagalog, the two are not the same. But the phrase that I am about to teach you, I'm sure both would understand perfectly well what you are saying. So the way to say it is, Gay lang an go an buki. To give you an example of how this might play out, you get off the airport and aside from being bombarded by the humid weather, all the jeepney drivers are asking you to get into their jeepney. And so you might say to them, Kelangan ko an puki, salamat po, thank you ma'am. And then they, you know, they, you get in the jeepney and go wherever. Next up, we have French. Now French as a language is sort of ambiguous. Unlike English, which has a word for everything, but the phrase that I'm about to teach you there is no ambiguity. The way to say it in French is Je besoin de la chatte. So to show off your cultural elitism while buying your baguette, you would say Je besoin de la chatte. Merci beaucoup. Next up, we have German. German is known to be a very harsh sounding language, but the phrase that I teach you when said properly can also sound very beautiful. So the way to say it is Ich brache mushi. Ich braha mushi. Danke. Next up, we have Italy. Now, Italy is a country filled with a lot of history and is a very beautiful place. The perfect place to have your wedding, your honeymoon, or even just going for vacation. So that's why it's very important that you get this correctly. So the proper way to say it in Italy is Oh, bisuno di la figa. Now, the Italian language is... You know, it's like music to the ears. So when you say it, you have to say it with a lot of vibrato. It would sound something like, Oh, bisuno di la figa. Grazie. Next up, we have Russian. So the proper way to say it in Russia is, Munye, munye nunes kiska. Munye nunes kiska. Spesibo. Next up, we have Chinese. Instead of just saying ni hao, the cultural upgrade would be, Wo shi yao bi bi. Wo shi yao bi bi. Xie xie. Next up, we have Arabic. 
Arabic is the main language spoken in the Middle East. So the way to say it is To give you an example, you're in the sand and then you see some woman in her bikini. To show off your newfound cultural knowledge, you go up to her and you say Next up, we have Swahili. Swahili is a very beautiful language and it is the main language spoken in Africa with over 200 million speakers. Now, the way to say it in Swahili, you would say na hi ta ji kuma and then you utilize <laughs> Next up, we have Spanish. And Spanish is spoken in a lot of places, uh, especially in South America, with the exception of a few countries such as Brazil, which speaks Portuguese. But if you master this phrase, all of Latin America and much more will understand exactly what it is that you are saying. So let's get right into it. Necesito la cosita. At this point, you probably noticed that I've been mixing in a little bit of slang, which is really cool because it makes you seem more cultured and adds a little hood to your vocabulary. And on top of that, the locals will respect you more when you can just walk up to them and be like, Ay, necesito la cosita. Donde esta la cosita? Muchas gracias. And they'll be like, hey, this guy speaks Spanish. He's so cultured. You know, he didn't just like go on Google Translate or like watch some random guy on YouTube like five minutes ago, you know? That's respect though. Australia. So the proper way the proper way to say it in Australian is oh, I might. I need the pussy. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you learned something and happy travelings!